We want to do everything we can do because we realize that we are at war. If we don't allow the Lord to wash us, we will not have no part with him. Sometimes we just have to get up and go. Doesn't matter what's going on now. Do not be afraid because God said, I am with you until the end of this earth. Forgiveness is a gift of grace, a reflection of God's love. If you want to be saved, you can be saved because he's standing with outstretched arms today. He is a forgiving God. He will forgive you for your sins. He'll give you that love that you're supposed to have for those that hurt you. I lift up every nurse. I lift up every doctor. I thank God for everyone. He's going to warn you. He's going to let you know that he's coming. That plague that's going around today, praise the Lord, amen, can be healed delivered but you need to seek Jesus you need to look up to him and he's waiting for those of you that are not saved to come to him amen he need, he's waiting for you if I am to help them I am supposed to pray I need to pray but I need to do something else too I need to stay home and not be running around getting the virus and and spreading the virus. I need to stay home because we are at war. Hi, I'm Claritha Thomas, Senior Pastor here at Victor and Jesus Christ Tabernacle. So happy to have you here. I hope you get inspired and blessed by the message today. Let's get into the word. Jesus. Father God, Lord, as I stand here, God, before your people, God, sharing the word of God um, through social media, God, or however they may be seeing it right now, God, I just thank you, Father, for all things, God. I thank you for being um, a servant that is willing to be used by you, God, to share your word with your people, God, and especially during this perilous time, Father God. I ask you right now, Father, just to strengthen each and every one, God, that may be listening on the sound of my voice, Lord. I thank you, God, for your um, love. I thank you, God, for your healing power. I thank you, God, for keeping us in our right mind, Father God. And Lord, as I open my mouth to speak, to share your words, God, with your people, God, I ask that the hearts be open and receptive of what the word is saying to your church. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that this word today will be a blessing to each and every one as we just be reminded of what the word of God says, and as I share with you, to be still, to be faithful, to remain strong and true, and to show mercy to those that need mercy. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, God. Victory in Jesus Christ Tabernacle now offers online and text giving. You can give securely on our website at www.victoryinjesuschristtabernacle.com. Once on our website, scroll down to Give Now. If this is your first time giving, click on the Sign In tab to register. If you have any questions or problems, scroll to the bottom of the page, click on Contact, and fill out the contact form, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. For text giving, text the word GIVE to 1239-880-8376. Click on the link provided in the message and it will take you to our secure giving platform. You can also mail your gifts to 419 School Drive, Immokalee, Florida 34142. Hallelujah. As I began to go into the Word of God, I just want to um, let a let you know that I am here as a servant of the Most High God. I thank God again for another opportunity. I do thank God and give um, respect to Pastor Thomas and the uh, co-pastor. I give thanks to each and every member of Victory in Jesus Christ and everyone that's listening. I thank God for my husband. I thank God for our um, videographer, and I and I ask God to continue to bless each and every one. I do realize that we are all living in a time where we have no control over what's going on, and I do know during these perilous times, the only thing that we can do is to continue to trust in the Lord. 
I, and we also can stand on the word of God regardless of what's going on. I do thank God for this here time that I can come to share with you and just to encourage our hearts to call through the message, a call to persevere. We're going to turn over to the book of Jude. And if those of you that know, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude, and it's right before Revelation. And just to give a little background, because I believe the same message that um, Jude ministered during this time is the same message that we're called to um, adhere to right now. Um, there is a time that the seem like the church is not moving. Um, it seems like the, um, the doors are never reopened, but I am here to encourage you, keep the faith. Do not move regardless. Unless you're moving forward in Christ, stay where you are. Just to give you a little background about Jude, the author of this brief but significant New Testament epistle written by Jude, although there is some debate on who the author is, refers to himself as a bond service of Jesus, servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. The writer's sincerity and humility are evidenced by the fact that he did not capitalize on his status as a brother of Jesus, instead describing himself as a bond servant of Jesus Christ. It is remarkable and inspiring to know that Jude once wanted to put Jesus away and later became a servant of Jesus and was employed as an instrument in expressing the divine word to man. The book of Jude takes its place along with other general letters, such as Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, and John's letters as part of God's inspired guidance for the church after the first few decades of its existence. As Christians expanded and the apostles began to pass on, questions and circumstances arose which required spirit-directed teaching and writing. Most of the common problems and severe ones was generated by teachings known as Gnostics, relating particular to the nature of God and Christ and to specific standards of living. Jude had apparently received word of such developments in the church. Some had departed from the church and were causing others to depart from the faith. At such a crucial time in the life of the church, Jude expressed in no uncertain terms God's continuing condemnation of all evil men and their practices. And at the same time, his warning and encouragement to those who would remain faithful. Jude's denunciation of evil and of those who practice it is one of the strongest in the New Testament Indeed, in the entire Bible. In the beginning of Jude's letter, verse 3, and I'm going to read verse 3, and it simply says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. And that's where we're at today. And I'm going to go on down to verse number 17. And it reads, But, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, In the last times there will be scoffers, who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternity. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. 
Now, as I was saying, before Jude provided these instructions for contending, he exhorted them to grow their character. Simply meaning because contending for the faith is as much about living and growing in the faith as it is defending it. Being grounded in the scriptures and growing in the faith toward God keeps the feet of any Christian from shifting when the wind from the sinfulness and false teaching blows their way. We have to be rooted in the word of God. Jews' message is clear and rings like that of a three-four trumpet blast. Divine condemnation has always been and will always be an evil. And those who practice it, the only sure foundation is the most holy faith as represented by the teachings of Christ and the apostles. And those who live by this faith shall endure to eternal life. Although Jude is not lengthy or complex, in structure, keep in mind that this brief letter's primary command is to keep yourself in the love of God. Why, why, why is Jude so important? Let's look at this here. Listen to this. Jude's edgy brevity communicates the urgency of his notion that false teachers needed to be condemned and removed from the church. Few words meant that Jude would not waste space dancing around the issue. So you don't have to be a man and a woman of many words to get God's work accomplished. He saw within the church people and practices that were worthy of condemnation, including rejecting authority and seeking to please themselves. In response to these errors, Jude marshaled much biblical imagery to make clear what he thought of it all. Anything from Cain killing his brother Abel to the punishment of the sinful people who populated Sodom and Gomorrah. Jude's letter shouldn't come as a shocker, but rather a confirmation that what God has continually said would happen is happening right now. Second Timothy 3 and 1 says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. It is imperative to understand there is no other gospel. Apostle Paul confronted the Galatians in the first few words of his letter to them. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He follows this with, which is not another. Of course, there was those close by to follow up with them after Paul left. The devil is never far away with his lies. Beware of what your ears are hearing. Today, we must stand in Christ as the early church stood. The words, the faith, and what they believe must be found on our lips. There is no other way, method, or tool to get saved. It is time to stand up, speak up, and make sure you're bound to Christ. As close as John chapter 13 says, for without the Lord, you can do nothing. But with the Lord, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We are living in perilous and troubled times. Our families feel it. The threat of these times on a daily basis. You know what I mean, and right now, we all are facing some type of issues. It is not, if not, praise be to God. I am telling you that we serve a God of the impossible and a Savior of the miraculous. If you face things that are getting you down in more ways than one, hold fast and seek the Lord. And I do not say that lightly. This is a time that we have to put what we know into action. Hallelujah. It ain't about 
somebody else's faith. It's about your faith. You got to put it into action. We usually say we're being tested. And yes, this is a test to see who's going to stand. We can find grace. We can find help, favor, and a way to make it through. I personally believe, and I would believe that somehow, some way, the Lord would make a way at, any, at this time. I encourage you to continually seek the Lord and find grace, sustaining grace to get you through. Many times a person can say, I can't take any more, but wait a minute, hold on. That is not who you are. You can take more because God said in his word, I will put no more on you than you can bear. Yet for many, they get up the next day and keep going. Instructions by Jude to believers on how we can keep ourselves in the love of God. Listen at this. Jude, 20, Jude returns in verses 20 and 21, speaking about and to those who are called, beloved, and kept. His appeal was for them to pray how all godly people should pray and how all godly people can pray. Romans 8 and 26 says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Thank you, God. Praying can be a struggle for Christians because dependency is a struggle for some people. It's hard for us to pray simply because it's hard for us to remember how much we need God. Jews' appeal for Christians to pray in the Holy Spirit would have been an appeal for them to become people who do not depend on themselves or their intellect or aging wisdom to figure out things. They could have been similar to us and forgotten that knowing a lot about God should not make you more independent of God. We need God. There's no other way to put it. There's no other person on this earth that we need or need to put all of our trust in. Jude wanted them to be a group of needy, <laughs> a group of needy people that would be led by the spirit and how they lived and how they prayed. We are a kelp people. There is no more that God wants to know that we need him. So you do never have to worry about going to God and telling him all about your troubles. Jews' instructions on how we should contend. Jews' distinction on how to be merciful tell us that every believer or non-believer might not need the same method, even though we all need the same mercy. There's only one mercy, and thank God for mercy. When we find ourselves wanting to contend in a way that is full of mercy and get appropriate for the person our mercy is toward, we look to God to guide us in the way of wisdom. James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Hallelujah. Don't you thank God for the wisdom that you have and the knowledge? Jews instructions are so important. I cannot stress it enough. His instructions are so important. Building ourselves up in the faith will anchor us in the truth of God's word. Praying in the Holy Spirit will increase our dependency upon God and his spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit, again, will increase our dependency upon God and his spirit. Waiting for God's mercy hmm, will keep our eyes on eternity. And all three will keep us in God's love. While there, when walking with a friend, 
and that friend may be living a sinful life, we will have the ability to love them well, but hate their sin. We want to be careful to never, ever, never, ever love others more than we love God, who's been merciful to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. In closing, my sisters and my dear brothers, I just want to encourage you to fight for the truth. Stand up against error. The book of Jude is very is the very definition of punchy and pitchy proclamation, with its short commands and statements popping off the page like machine gun fire. But in our day and age, punchy has become rude or unacceptable. In many circles, the forcefulness of Jew will not be tolerated. Everybody do not want to hear the raw and unadulterated truth of God. But if we are Christians and believers, we should still share the word of God. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't cover it up. Don't cut back. We need to go back to the old way. The crowds preparing the crowds prefer a softer and gentle side of the Christian faith. But Jude reminds us that there is a time and a place for the aggressive protection of the truth from those who would seek to tear it down. Jude opened with a prayer to God in the first verses 1 and 2 and closed his letter with praise to God in verses 24 and 25. His letter includes the command to fear God and his judgment, lest we fall like those around us. This is not the time to take your eyes off the prize. Keep your eyes on God regardless of what is going on around you. Stand up. I can't say it enough. Stand up in God's grace and be found in our Lord. Be counted for righteousness and truth. Don't let anything get you down. But if, it's, but if it does, seek the Lord. Plant your banner of truth in the foundation of Christ Jesus and stand no matter what. Now, my brothers and sisters, exhale and praise God for what he's done and what he will do. My brothers and sisters, press on. Be strong in the Lord and keep the faith. May the Lord Jesus Christ establish and strengthen you in the days of hell. And for the closing, I want to read a few um, stanzas from the song by Pastor Donnie McClurkin. It says, stand. And it reads, what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's never enough? And what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? Tell me, what do you give when you're giving all your all and it seems like you can't make it happen, make it through? Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand, press on in the Lord, my brothers and sisters. In closing, my final prayer says, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Dear Heavenly Father, God, again, as we depart from this here session, God, I thank you, Father, for what you have allowed me to share with your people. You said,
said, your word is quick and sharper than any two-headed sword. I thank you, God, for encouraging in the call for your people to persevere, Lord, even during the midst of the war, the good and the bad, God. We thank you, Father God, for what our ears have heard. We thank you, God, that we will continue to write your word upon the table of our heart, God, that we will not sin willingly against you. And, Father God, we thank you right now for each and every one. Again, that was on the sound of my voice that heard the encouragement for today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Victory in Jesus Christ Tabernacle now offers online and text giving. You can give securely on our website at www.VictoryInJesusChristTabernacle.com. Once on our website, scroll down to Give Now. If this is your first time giving, click on the Sign In tab to register. If you have any questions or problems, scroll to the bottom of the page, click on Contact, and fill out the contact form, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. For text giving, text the word GIVE to 1239-880-8376. Click on the link provided in the message, and it will take you to our secure giving platform. You can also mail your gifts to 419 School Drive, Immokalee, Florida, 34142.